So anyway, back to the work. So what's what I usually do is find a background that I like uh, or that I think might work with the subject. Usually what happens is I'll find 10, 15 backgrounds that I like, pile them all in and go through like a process of elimination. Like, you know, there can only be one. So I'll just start fiddling and checking out the different layers and seeing which one looks best behind that subject. And uh, once I found what I like, I will... Photoshop has gotten, it's come a long way with some of its, its new tools. And typically uh, how I was taught back in the day was to <laughs> use a pen tool. And I despise the pen tool. I refuse to use it. It's disgusting. Um, what I typically use, what I learned, uh, a, prof a lovely professor who showed me a shortcut in college was this quick selection tool. And in tandem with, what is this tool down here? This this bad boy. Oh, you can't see it behind my, my, my box here. Um, can't think of what this is. The mask? Something? Ugh, forget what it's called. I'm bad with remembering the names of these. But anyway, I would used to just quick select and then uh, inverse that selection, cl click the little mask tool, it turns red, and you can like use the paintbrush with black and white to perfect, like like with a paintbrush, perfect exactly where you want it selected, and that's how I would hand select my, uh, my subjects. And now I still do that, but Photoshop's got a nice tool where you can select the subject, it's a part of their um, text to image background generator or whatever. Uh, I don't use it. <laughs> I don't I don't like what AI does to these. I've tried to just see what AI in Photoshop itself will do with my cosplay stuff. It's not it's not as good as what I can do, so <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing it my way. Um, so I use this tool to select the subject now because it's pretty dang close. As long as the background's not too noisy, it gets pretty dang close. So I'll select the subject with that, get a rough selection. Then go in, use my quick selection tool, clean it up, use the this little whatever the fuck that is, I forgot, I'm sorry, with the paintbrush, and then really, really fix it up. Here, I'll show you exactly how I do that. So there it's selected. It's already perfect because I already did it, but for the sake of showing you, let's inverse it. This is something I do when I'm working. See how it's red? You can also change this color. Um, Sometimes I'll have people wearing red or whatever, and you can't quite tell where you're selecting. So you can thankfully change it to whatever. I usually just cycle between red and like bright teal, because those people are very rarely wearing like neon red or neon teal. <laughs> Unless you get cosplayers, <laughs> sometimes they are. So with this, I would typically, you can see everything's pretty much selected as I wanted it to be. Um, this one I didn't do a perfect selection all the way around and had to clean it up kind of rough. But you can use the paintbrush to like eh, take away where you don't want it to be selected. So it's a great way to get like a precise selection. Anyway, that's that. So what I've done with this piece, found my background, selected my subject, took them out. Took them out. That's the original coloring on the subject, right? That's I scooted them over a little bit, but that's basically how he looks. So the next step was to clone, duplicate whatever that layer, get another one, and come up here, neuro filters, and they have this great tool called harmonization. Whoop, it's over here harmonization right here and if you turn it on you can select exactly what layer you want to harmonize with <clears throat> and I chose this one obviously because it's the background I want to work with and it just kind of helps uh, using AI <laughs> it helps auto kind of you can still use little sliders to tweak it you know but um, it, it's a great way to like get overall environmental change on your subject to match the background behind it. So that's pretty cool. And then I overlaid, I copied that, so what I did is I copied that twice, overlaid it. I have a better example in these other ones where I didn't delete my layers. Uh, but I tried to save as much as I could for you. And in these layers, 
Let's see, so what's going on here? These are clipped down, so these are, oh yeah, color. So what I did on this layer, layer 10, was go in with yellow, white, red, black, all the colors that are on his suit, and just kind of went over all that. That's just, I don't know, something I do is hand paint over color, just to make it pop a little bit more. Um, same for blacks and whites, I'll do a separate layer just for highlights to go over where it's really light and make it even lighter. Put a little glare on the gun because I can't help myself. I have to put a lens flare in there sometimes. Not all the time, not in every piece, but every once in a while. And then these last layers are just light effects, just to kind of help blend the background in a little bit. I also used this, hold on, which layer? This layer and this layer is where I get a lot of color on the cowl here. I tried to like make it as yellowy as possible so it looks like that background is touching him. And then, when I was happy with it in Photoshop, I exported it as a JPEG, kicked it back over to Lightroom, and then found a preset that I liked, and this is the final product. I might have found a few presets that I liked. But that's how... That's At least that's what I call the final product for that one. I'm happy with that. I think it's cool. It's, I don't know. And so the next one that I worked on while you weren't looking... We'll go ahead and I don't think I'm, I don't think I need to save this. <laughs> so the next one I worked on was this. I saw this lovely fox Mando and was inspired to put her in the woods. So maybe she's on indoor doing some business. I don't know, but I found some <laughs> public domain material of some woods that really I feel like match the weapon that she's holding, the staff spear thing. And then I obviously like the original photo is very cool, green, blue, gray, right? So I had to start getting it to the colors that are warm. And I feel like I got that, I achieved that here. And so to my little idea to save these and show you how I adjusted this was to merge them, drop that layer over into another, like, you know, drag drop into another file over here that's open and then come back, undo my work, and then bring it back. So you can so you can see both. You can see the before and after of the background now. I figured out how to do it real quick. So here's the finished product of the background. A little more work to the background. I like that. I think it just makes the woods look a little more dreamy. Oh, and here we got our subject. Now I didn't save every single layer for this, but same rules as before. I did the neural filter, adjusted her to the background, did a couple of different layers. Not sure why I merged them to this, but here we are. And I put in some fog, but the fog is a little too white. So I had to color correct it to the rest of the background. Did that by just dropping a simple layer of, like I selected, use the paint bucket tool, bring up a new layer, clipped it to that so it doesn't affect the overall background. And then just selected where it looks kind of foggy back here, drop that color in, there it is. Oh, and I put it like I, you know, meshed it in with one of these overlay layers. It's simple. And then the rest are just light effects. And then, oh yeah, here's where I painted over her a little bit, really brought her color up. I don't know, just have to, but <laughs> I have to paint feel like I'm making art, right? Doing something by hand. And then I kicked her back over to Lightroom. Was she not the next one I did? Yes, she was the next one. Okay, there she is. So we went from that to that. Pretty cool. She's in a forest. Yeah, I mean, not bad for being outside, <laughs> not in the studio. We were using noon lighting. That's the sun. There's my light. Eh. <laughs> you know, we're working with what we got. But it still looks pretty damn dope. It's okay. And then the next one that we worked on, let's see if I can, eh. there we go. The next one that I did was this one. 
Don't need to save that now. You've seen it. I don't save my PSD files because they're massive. They end up being four or five gigs and I don't need that in my life or on my computer. So <laughs> I just save the finished product and that's enough for me. I feel like I'm not going to go back and change it. So. Ah, uh, yeah, here's a public domain picture. I didn't even bother taking the lady out. I was like, meh, I'll just block her. <laughs> Put a little blur on it, started changing the color. Oop. Really started adjusting that. Threw more, more over it. There's the finished background. And then boom, subject. <laughs> Don't even have to worry about that lady back there. Now, yeah, now you can see how I blended them in. So I took this original subject. You end up having like four or five layers of thing of the same thing here. But the original has the, obviously the original lighting doesn't quite mesh in with the background that I've made for it. So I copied that, boom, there's layer 20 copy, neural filter, meshed it in with the background, and then made another copy, layer 20 copy two, I guess, put it in overlay, change the opacity and the fill a little bit because I'm picky. See, it changes it just ever so. And there's another copy. <laughs> I can take a copy of any of these solid ones, uh, like the first one here. I took another copy, so yeah, to layer 20 copy three, and just painted it black. Just select it, make an overall selection like that, and paint it black. And then go in and blur it to like, what did I have it set at? Uh, it's not telling me, but it was like 170 or something. Put your blur up to 170. And then that's your shadow that you can play with. They're outside and not like up against a portrait backdrop, so I'm not making my shadow crazy, but this is something that I do whenever um, for example, in like everyday photography that you might do, uh, I think, I think, I think recently, oh yeah, I had a family for Christmas, the holidays were around recently, right? <laughs> and I had this one family who wanted to do like a high fashion photo shoot kind of a feel for Christmas. They didn't want like Christmas background, they didn't want trees or lights or any of that, they just wanted like solid white make it look like we're having a high fashion photo shoot but like really they were really nicely dressed and i was like okay that sounds like cool that's cool that's what you want your christmas cards to be i'm down for whatever and i didn't have a backdrop because i haven't re-upped on my last backdrop roll i usually use big big paper rolls that go on for many many feet um, but I ran out last year and I never re-upped because I just don't use them that much. But uh, this woman just really wanted this. So I was like, okay, you get whatever backdrop you can. Because I can't get mine in time. I have to get it from like a retailer, like a wholesaler. Um, <clears throat> and this was like a week before the shoot. You know, I didn't have time to order one. But she got some little, <laughs> some little thing off of Timu, Timu, whatever. Uh, a thing that I won't shop on. <laughs> but she's like, oh, it said it was bigger. And it looked like a nice background, but what I was working with was like this very thin sheet that you could see right through. And was only, like, it didn't even touch the floor. It wasn't even a whole backdrop. So I had to do some crafty editing. <laughs> and one of the things I did to put their shadows back in after I whitened out their background completely was this little trick of selecting the subject, copying the layer, and then blurring out a black version of that layer to create a shadow that I can then move into any direction I want and make it look like they're there on that background. So that's a handy little thing, handy little trick. So that's, oh, I must have added fog too and then changed the color of the fog. And I guess that's where I left it. And then I must have kicked it back over to Photoshop, ran it through a couple of presets and there she is different vibe from the from the first one but still you know I don't know I believe that she's in a forest getting ready to fight sure looks like there's already been a battle the tree was knocked down who knows <clears throat> so the very next one this is gonna be a quick stream I'm like popping right through 